And is there no limit to the amazing things our cell phones can do? We'll show you how they're spurring a weather satellite revolution next on Morning Rush. Dave Malkoff joins me now hey, in studio. It? Hope you're having a good morning. What's yes. up? Yes. Hey, you remember when you would go to space technology and the space technology would give us Earthlings things like <laughs> Tang and Velcro? Or actually, here's a bit of I love it. 60s space technology That's good for you stuff. right there. Well, now we're seeing that process all the way in reverse. The uh, little powerful cell phones that we have in our pockets, those are making a weather satellite revolution possible. It's happening right now on the campus of MIT. This shop class, much like any other shop class, focuses on building something from scratch that works just as well as something you pay good money for. Zero and lift off. Companies and nations pay hundreds of millions of dollars to build and launch weather satellites. Oh, do you want me to unplug it? These MIT students have figured out how to do it on the cheap. So you're telling me this is not a scale model of anything. This is the thing. This is the thing, yeah. right. So this is the actual size. It is It is smaller than most shoe boxes. Dr. Kerry Cahoy runs the MIT Space Systems Lab. Should we run it again? This is Micromass, or a micro-sized microwave atmospheric satellite. Once in space, the tiny satellite will scan tropical storms and hurricanes as it zooms around the planet in low Earth orbit. Um, so that we can get storm updates faster and get better data um, that are closer to the Earth physically than the satellites that are further away. Everything's plugged in. This lab is building the thing by hand for less than 1% of what you would pay for a big fancy satellite. The same fundamental technology that you need in your cell phone to receive radio waves we use here in the radiometer payload. It's just a ball on a cushion of air. Building their own zero gravity simulator is not the only way they've cut costs here. The bigger satellites take a lot of more people. Here's one example. The team knew they needed something metal rigid yet flexible to use as their antenna to get all the information back down to earth. Then they realized it was right in their hands. Um, well, it turns out that a tape measure is exactly what you need and you just kind of bolt it down and it flops out when we launch from the Peapod. Well, I showed you the Peapod. The Peapod is the way they get it into space. When you say free launch. You, you don't pay for it at <laughs> we all? We don't pay for it. We don't pay for the launch. There's no cost no. for launching no, a rocket not, not into space. Passing one minute, 20 seconds. NASA's Peapod program is basically unused space on rockets that are going up anyway. They offer it to students for free. When you have a free launch like that, amazing things happen to technology. <laughs> Satellite for nothing and a rocket ship for free. It's, it's very exciting to be this close. Micromass will be orbiting next year. So, Maria, meteorologist like you, I know yeah. that you want to buy one. I'm ready. And you I'm want to ready. put your own weather yeah, satellite right. up there, right? There's a company called Pumpkin. We're looking at their website right now. Look, you can buy it. I wow. bet you you could get a better price maybe on eBay or Craigslist <laughs> or something. But you can actually buy these things, and this is what it looks like. This is a little cube set, and it's got a motherboard and wow. power supply and all this. Uh, Eight to ten thousand dollars or so to buy the hardware, but if you want to get something that will actually go into space and work up there, we're talking about maybe twenty thousand dollars. But that's chump change when you compare it to other space. And programs. a free launch. Yeah. Love that, <laughs> Steph. Over to you. I mean, every time I see Malkoff, all I can picture him in is that the wind tunnel thing going. He's, he's the adventurer. He truly is. And always, <laughs> always is an adventurer. So, hey, we got our new rivals coming up.